In this video, we're going to begin looking at creep deformation. And we'll start by considering things like how the strain changes in time, or what the strain rate is, or how the temperature affects the stress. Let's just start by defining what creep is. So creep is plastic deformation that occurs at elevated temperature. By elevated temperature, that means about uh, temperatures greater than maybe a third of the melting point, or a half of the melting point. And so for some materials, this is a very high temperature, but for some materials, creep can actually happen at what we would think of as a relatively low temperature, because it's high relative to their melting point. Ice is an example of that. Another important point about creep is that it occurs at stresses lower than the yield strength. So sometimes creep deformation can be unexpected if you're not thinking about it in doing the materials design because you think this stress level is safe, it's below the yield strength, but if the temperature gets too high, then creep deformation can occur. Also in, in creep, we are interested in sort of the interaction between the stress and the temperature. And depending on what the stress and the temperature are, we will see a resulting strain. Although really what we're usually interested in is the strain rate, which is how the strain is changing in time. And uh, we're also interested in the time to failure. Right, so how long can this piece keep deforming in creep uh, before it fails? So let's go ahead and take a look then at how the strain varies with time. So if we had a um, low temperature, let's say, and we had a stress lower than the yield stress, and we wanted to consider how the strain varied with time, That would essentially look something like this. It would, it would start with some uh, linear elastic part, and then the strain would just be constant. It would not continue to deform, right? It would, it would be deformed a little bit to start, and then it would not deform any further. But that's not the case when we have high temperature. Right? So if we have high temperature, and we still have a stress lower than the yield stress we can consider instead the strain versus time behavior. And what happens is that we have an initial region that looks sort of similar in that there's a high strain to start with, but then that it starts to decrease, but the strain keeps going up, 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 up. And then finally we get to a point where it fails. And so I'm gonna label this as some T2 Right, this could be T1 here, and some stress level one. So a couple of things to note here are that we have essentially some region over here where the strain is, is the slope of the curve is changing. And then we have some region where the slope of the curve is pretty constant, and this is called stage two. Sometimes this is what's called steady state because the rate is the same. And then over here is stage three. In general, most creep deformation occurs here. So this region is actually usually much longer than I've drawn it in terms of time. And then this goes up and, and fails, all right? Um, and so we can also basically denote here this steady state creep rate. Okay, so now the question is, how do you think this will change if we increase the temperature? So think about that for a minute. We're gonna increase the temperature. We might expect that the steady state creep rate changes. We might expect that the strain overall is higher and we might expect that it also fails sooner, and we see all of those things play out. 
So here's how this looks if we have a higher temperature but still the same stress. And we could do this again and ask what's the effect of a higher stress. So let's compare then. We'll keep the same temperature, T3, and we'll increase the stress. And we see a lot of the same changes to the curve. So here's how this looks at a higher temperature and a uh, high stress also. And again, this, this steady state region really should be a lot longer. It's just that I'm drawing this in a way that we can fit it on here. But So that's how that looks. So just a couple of things to sort of summarize. We know that the steady state strain rate will go up as the temperature goes up. Right, the steady state strain rate goes up as the stress, the applied stress goes up. So these usually happen under constant stress. The time to failure goes down as the temperature goes up, and the time to failure goes down as the stress goes up. All right, and those are all played out here in the graph. Okay, so let's consider then how the strain rate changes as a function of time. So how the slope of these strain versus time curves is changing as a function of time. So let's start by considering the strain rate versus time behavior uh, for the curves that we drew on the last slide. And if we start sort of with the T2 and sigma 1, we notice that at first, the strain rate is quite high, but it decreases through stage one. And then it gets sort of constant in the steady state part, and then it increases again until the point of failure. And this curve should be smoother than I've drawn it here. Right? And so then we could uh, look at either the effect of increasing stress or increasing temperature, or in the end, both. Um, if we do that, though, then, then we see sort of that it's at a higher strain rate. The steady state region sort of comes on sooner, and the failure happens sooner as well. So this curve is for higher temperature and or higher stress. So it's useful to look at the data in this way for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that it shows the differences in the steady state creep rate. And it's really that steady state uh, strain rate that's most important to us because, as I said, the specimen spends the majority of its time in that mode of deformation. And so if we want to be able to predict the lifetime, for example, that's what we need to know about. So, you know, what does the steady state creep rate depend on? Let's take a look at a general equation for that behavior. So here is the sort of most general form of the equation for the steady state strain rate during creep. And I will go through and explain the variables in just a minute. But in the video that follows this, I go into the different mechanisms that are possible and we find the specific equations depending on what's happening. So uh, this first variable here, this is just the steady state strain rate. And so as a reminder, this is defined as the change in strain with respect to time. B is some constant and in the equations for each of the different mechanisms, what goes into B becomes more clear. So sigma, this is the applied stress. And as I said, that's typically a constant during a creep test. N is the stress exponent. And depending on the value of N, that tells us a lot about actually the mechanism that's taking place. And we'll see that on the next video. R is the gas constant and T is the temperature. And Q is an activation energy, and the exact kind of activation energy that it is depends on the mechanism. So a couple of things that we can note about this, 
equation and about the steady state creep behavior is that this has a power law dependence on stress. Right, so it's possible that this is sort of stress to the third power, stress to the fifth power. And the second is that we can see very clearly that creep is a thermally activated process, right, because it has this Arrhenius type behavior in the e to the minus q over rt, right? So that tells us that it's because it's at high temperature that the deformation is able to take place. So now that we have this equation for strain rates, and we know how it varies with sigma, and we know how it varies with t, let's look at those both in a graphical representation to see what kind of behavior we would expect. Okay, so we have our uh, equation for strain right here, just so we can remember what that is. And we want to start and consider how strain rate varies with temperature. And because this is a thermally activated process, we expect to see Arrhenius type behavior. And so the strain rate should be linear when plotted as ln of strain rate versus 1 over t. So if we consider that this is for one particular strain stress level, rather, then if we increase the stress level, we can think about what should happen, right? So at, at any given temperature, a higher stress will lead to a higher strain rate. And so that will shift the line up here. So this is a higher stress. Now, one thing to note is that I drew these more or less with the same slope. And if they have the same slope, then that indicates that the same mechanism is acting. Because the slope of the line is given by negative q over r. And so if there's the same value of q, then the same mechanism is, is active. Okay, so let's look now at uh, strain rate versus stress. And notice that this is a log-log plot. And so if we took the log of both sides and we were only interested in the stress part, then we get a linear relationship where the slope is given by n. So if we consider some temperature level that I'll call T2 just to be consistent with before, then the slope here is given by n. And we can then ask what happens if we go to a higher temperature. And so again, if the temperature is higher, the strain rate will be higher. And so that is just shifted up here. And these relationships are borne out in the experimental data as well. And so as before, if the slope is the same, the mechanism is also still the same. So the last piece of the phenomenology of creep that we want to look at is the time to failure. Okay, so we have a, a plot here of uh, log sigma versus the time to failure. And sometimes this is called for creep the time to rupture. Um, they're, they're equivalent nomenclatures. Okay, so as the stress gets higher, we should expect that the time to failure gets shorter, right? So we, we have this kind of a relationship here where at a high stress, we have a low time. And this, let's say, is for one particular temperature. If we increase the temperature, then our line shifts down here. And we can kind of actually think about sort of in a different way. So it, we need to know what is the time to failure. So we say we want our, our piece to last X amount of years. What's the allowable stress? That's kind of the way that we would use this sort of plot.
So from a design standpoint, we essentially want to know how can we get a longer time to failure, right? Or how can we make it so that we could operate at a higher stress? That's sort of typically the things that you'd want to do from a design standpoint. So if you have a known sort of time to failure that you're designing for, if you decrease the temperature, that will allow you to increase the stress. If instead you have sort of a known stress in your design, then decreasing the temperature will increase your time to failure. And if you have a known temperature, essentially, in the design, then you'll have to decrease the stress in order to increase the time to failure. So in this video, we have looked through how the strain rate, stress, temperature, and time to failure interact during high temperature creep deformation.